Hi, my name is Dan Nelson, and I want to show you today a wonderful product called shell paper. Not to be confused with shelf paper. <laughs> it, it's from Nepal. It's rice paper on the back, and on the front, it's got this delightful striated linear texture and shells, literal ground up shells on it. So we get a little bit of sparkle and a really nice toothy texture. Here's what we're going to do with it. We're going to mount it onto a piece of foam core and then do some artwork in it. And to do that, I'm going to use a spray fixative. And I'm not going to spray this indoors. I wouldn't recommend that you spray it indoors either. Uh, so you're going to follow me outside in a few minutes to, to do the spraying. But before we do that, I'm going to do a couple fun things, taking advantage of the texture in this paper. And you're going to watch me first cut a strip. I've already done several others so that I only have to show you one time. The strip that I'm cutting, that I'm cutting off right now, I'm going to use as a frame or a border on this when we're all finished. Okay, so I have my strips laid out over here. The other thing I'm going to do just for fun to take full advantage of the texture in this paper is instead of mounting it so the lines are either horizontal or vertical, which would sort of be the, the first impression after playing with it for a while, I'm going to mount it so that the lines are go at an angle. And then when I put the frame on it, that will, in a sense, straight, straighten it up in our minds. Now, before we go outside and spray, though, let me explain to you how we're going to do this. We're not going to spray glue on this. We're actually going to spray, spray the glue on the piece of foam core. And then I'm going to lay it quickly down on the back of our rice paper, shell paper. And then we're going to trim the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the paper right now with lots of extra room so that I don't have to be fussy or slow when I am placing the foam core on the paper. I don't have to be careful, careful, careful. We'll do the careful stuff later. You see the, the process I'm going through right now? So I'm going to spray this, lay it down here, and then trim the excess. But now it's time to go outside and do some spraying. Follow me there. Okay, so I have my spray mount. I've got just a, a working piece of scrap cardboard here. I'm going to spray generously on the back of this foam core. And then take the shell paper. Make sure I'm doing it right side up. Apply that to the foam core. When I go inside, I'm going to carefully take my X-Acto knife and trim off the excess. And then I'm going to take my four framing strips and I'm going to place them like a border on the shell paper. But I'll go ahead and spray the glue on them right now so that they'll be ready for me when I need them inside. I'm glad I'm doing this outside. <laughs> I would recommend you do the same. Okay, let's go back in. Now I'm trimming the excess shell paper off the back of the foam board. Do you see now why it's better to make it oversized and then trim it? That's a good, good tip to keep in mind in a lot of different situations. Cut it large glue it together, then trim it. I've already made two of the cuts here, so you don't have to watch me do something that you understand already. There we go. Woohoo! <laughs> that looks pretty nice. Now what I'm going to do is take the strips of shell paper that I cut earlier and use them as a border. And here's what I'm going to do. Same principle. Glue first cut second. In other words, I'm not going to, I don't cut them to exactly the right size or length and then try to get them in position 
I get them in position first, glue them down, and then cut them. You'll see in just a second. And I'm doing this just because it came to mind to take full advantage of the uh, delightful texture of the shell paper. I'm going to do a mitered corner. You'll see what that means in just a second if you don't understand that word. I'm cutting here, I hope, through two layers of shell paper. Peel off the top one, that's easy enough. Peeling off the second one, that's going to be a little trickier. But I'm hoping I can do it. That'll do. Same thing here. That's called a, a mitered corner where it comes together at an angle. Got it? Just for fun. Everything I do is just for fun. So I invite you to have fun with me. Good enough art is art that you enjoy doing. I'm changing my mind on this one, by the way. I've decided that it's easier just to trim it this way, and we still end up with a mitered corner. And then, as soon as I finish this border, I'm actually going to do some artwork on the front side of this shell paper. Because I hope that the texture of the paper just invites you to be creative, as it does me. It says, draw on me, draw on me. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to do that exact thing. I don't know if your paper ever talks to you, but <laughs> mine talks to me all the time. Okay, let's look at the final product. And everybody give us a good Ooh. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Now, one of my favorite mediums media to use on this shell paper, having fiddled around with it quite a bit, is watercolor pencil. I wouldn't have thought that shell paper would take a wet media very well, but as a matter of fact, it, it takes it quite well. And I'm going to start by doing a very loose rendering of a mountain. What else? A couple trees on each side. The hint of a river, good enough. We have not got all day. <laughs> so I'll just do a quick sketch. That was in what color? Bark, they call it, dark brown. Hark, it was in bark. I'm going to use uh, bright blue. Sure, let's go with bright blue. If, nev if you've never used watercolor pencils before, I certainly uh, recommend them. They're great, great fun. If you're a watercolor artist, watercolor pencil is just sort of a natural adjunct or corollary to the skills you've already developed as, an, as a watercolor painter. Just gives you one additional tool, one additional dimension. And the way I, there are many ways to use them. The way I usually use them is I do a drawing first and then apply water and lift up parts of the drawing to get my watercolor pigment. And I'm going to, you can hardly see this really, but I'm going to give just a faint blush of blue to the sky. You can't see it now, but what, what I'm doing is preparing for the wet, for the water that will pick up this pigment quite well. In fact, let me go ahead and show you right now. I'm going to use a nice two-inch brush. Have a tissue ready. There you go. You see? So what you couldn't see earlier because it was in pencil now is quite, quite plain. A nice bluish watercolor blush to my sky. I don't want too much. I want it to be kind of subtle. Now let's do, let's see if I have a dark green here. 
probably have to do two colors at the same time because this will be too green for my tree. So I'm going to do dark green and uh, baked earth at the same time here because I'm going to blend them together. with my water. It looks like I'm getting more baked earth than green. You ever drawn with two pencils at the same time? <laughs> Great fun. I'm not sure I have either. Now in my mountain, some browns. I'm going to come back with white. I'll just go ahead and tip my hand to you. I'm going to use this a Turner Acryl Gouache Soft White Paint. Delightful stuff, very opaque. And I'm going to do that last to get my white highlights, like snow on the mountain. Maybe some mist rising from between these trees. Okay, I'm going to stop talking so you can just watch for a few minutes. I failed to mention to you that I plan to use this Prismacolor fine point marker set and I think brown or black, brown or black, brown or black, um, I think black. And I'm going to increase the linearity, <laughs> is that a word? A line, a line knee ness of my illustration here, just a little bit. So again, you can watch me do this quickly. That's fun. Now, for the final step, I'm going to use some acryl gouache. It's like acrylic, but it has some gouache in it. And the property, the primary property or benefit of gouache is that it's very opaque. I don't need very opaque in this particular project, but um, the, te the uh, fluidity, the softness of this medium does make it particularly appropriate, easy to brush with. It, this paint, of course, comes in a whole range of colors. I think I'm just going to use white today. But we'll see. I reserve the right to change my mind. It's the essence of being an artist, isn't it? So one thing leads to another. People come up to me often when I'm painting outside and they'll look at a, a nearly finished painting and they say, wow, and to think you had all that in your mind before you started. <laughs> I'm usually nice, <laughs> usually. And <laughs> I just smile and say, yes. <laughs> but inside I'm going, no, not at all. Uh, I made it up as I went along, one step at a time. 
If you're an artist, you understand that process. It's more, more like a feels more like a process of discovery sometimes than it does uh, invention. I'm I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. I'm like un. Anyway, I'm getting weird on you. I'll I'll let it go at that. <laughs> Ooh, I'm liking this. It's picking up some of the watercolor pigment underneath, which is wonderful. So now my, my white is not so white anymore, which suits me just fine. Now it's pale green. Very cool. I was trying to indicate, I don't know, just distance, a little bit of misty, maybe mist rising between the trees there in front of the mountain. We do some mist over here too. I spent took many trips, had the had the wonderful privilege of visiting the Rocky Mountains many times when I was well, all, all through my life, but starting when I was a kid. And uh will never forget the impact that those mountains had visually on me and just between you and me I'm positive that this is a one of the Grand Tetons they have a certain feel so just in case you were wondering <laughs> I'm not not operating from a photograph I'm operating from a photograph that's in my head okay and then this mountain little mountain stream here in the foreground bubbling over the rocks And we'll call it Teton Study on Shell Paper. <laughs> How pompous. Anyway, either that or we just call it, heck, having fun with new media. That's what, that's what it's really about. Okay? I want to overdo it. A couple more touches. And of course, the all important signature. And we're done. Pick up some shell paper, play with it, play with everything else I've played with. Most of all, have fun playing. Let me know how it goes. Visit me on my website, dannelsonart.com, and I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.